اعترفوا بأنهم ملكه وعبيده they finally admit that they are in the dominion they admit in this when the calamity comes they admit we are the dominion of God Inna lillahi, we belong to God. In other words, if I take something, if I take this, if I owned it, and I took it and threw it out, and you say, you can't do that. Why can't I do that? This is mine. I own it. I can do whatever I want with it. That's the nature of property. Property is, the, the property is that the one who owns it has the right to do what he wills with it. That's the nature of property. If you don't have that uh, quality, uh, of possession, then it's not really your property. Now, because the dunya is not our property, we can't do whatever we want with it, can we? But we understand the concept of property. The, the, this world is the dominion of God, and therefore God can do whatever He wants with it. Now, the nature of, you see, if I have a book and I burn it, and you say to me, you can't do that. Yes, I can. It's my book, and I want to burn it. You shouldn't burn books. I, maybe I shouldn't, but I can, and you can't stop me by law. So then if, if, if the person asks you, why did you burn the book? Because there's mistakes in it. Oh, I didn't realize. Now I've explained myself, and now you, it makes sense to you. This is Musa and Al-Khidr, right? In that story of Al-Kaf, which is the story of the problem of evil. That story solves the problem of evil. Because Musa is looking with the eye of the outward and everything he sees is wrong. But when it's explained to him by a servant who was given knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, suddenly the servant, the Musa is saying, I didn't realize. Now I have an explanation. Well, what happens on Yom Qiyamah? Allah tells us in the Quran, He explains it all to us. And then everybody's going to say, now it makes sense. The difference between the believer and the kafir is in this world we're saying, we know it makes sense and we're willing to wait until the day of judgment to have it explained. Because we trust Allah. They're saying, no, it's wrong. How do you know you don't have all the information? You cannot make a judgment about a thing unless you completely understand that thing. To judge a thing is only one aspect of conceptualizing the entirety of that thing. It's a principle in logic. And that's why a judge has to know all the facts. If you, if you prejudge, it's called prejudice. And, and it's, it's considered to be a moral vice, to be prejudiced. So we cannot prejudge God. We don't have that right to do that. We cannot prejudge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who knows all things. And as for you, you have only been given a small amount of knowledge. But I will end this by saying, read history. These are not bad times. Muslims shouldn't be so negative. There's been much worse times. I mean, there's aspects that are bad about this time, and certainly uh, one of the greatest calamities of the time is that we don't have a lot of people of knowledge anymore, and we, do, and we don't have uh, levels of deen and things like this. But just in terms of outward dunya calamities, this period is nothing if you read history. It's nothing. The real calamities of this age are spiritual calamities. They're not worldly calamities. So what we should be, if we're going to weep over the calamities of the age, we should be weeping about the loss of Iman, about the lack of religion, about the lack of spirituality. We shouldn't be weeping about all this stuff we see out there because it's just not that bad. I'm sorry. And if you think it is, you haven't read history. Things have been much worse. I mean, read about earlier wars and what, how many people died and, and plagues that afflicted people and wiped out. A third of Europe was wiped out by the Black Plague. And, but there's too many blessings. We've got the blessings we have, it's just, it's just overwhelming. That's why, inshallah, we'll just all ask Allah to put us in a state of gratitude with Allah and make us from the shakirin. You know, really, make us from the shakirin and just not complain. Complain. Even the thing about complainers, even complainers don't like complainers. Really.
They want to complain, but they don't want to listen to anybody complain. So, inshallah, we'll all stop whining. It's the maqam of the tifl, is to whine. That's what I always tell my boys. Nobody likes a whiner, even a whiner. And they laugh, because they know it's true. So whining is a maqam. It's the maqam of the tifl. That's what a whiner is. And the, the rijal, and the rijal is a, it's a, in, in haqiqah, it doesn't mean a male. The rajal is male and female. It's the one who has reached the maqam of the adult. It's the mature one. That's what it means. It's the mature one. Rujula is maturity. So inshallah, Allah make us all mature. محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب ومن عجمي محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب ومن